When I was young, I fell in love with giant clams. Growing those animals, working with them, learning from them, it's for me a, a blessing. And I came to Koshrae and see all these clams. I make my love for animals to my life. Beside me. Beside you, <laughs> yeah. Giant clams give the reef life. Now, today, we hardly can see it on our reef. With climate change and over-harvesting, giant clams has become threatened all around the world. Nowadays, many places here, I believe in Koshai, that the reef's dying. A healthy reef after bleaching event can recover way faster if the population of clams is healthy on the reef. <laughs> We've been doing this for 17 years. This is our daily work, running the clam farm. If we do spawning, we work until past midnight. So there's a lot that is love that does the job. These are endangered species. I think right now there's not one facility in the world that has that amount of clams that we have here. When we started here, there were only one clam species cultured here. Now we have six different species. It's not easy. At the moment, we almost exploding. Estimation is more than 10,000 animals in this tank here. All our tanks are filled, but this is when you grow six different species. Micronesia is in the northern part of the Pacific. Kosha is the smallest island with the least population, with a nice sleeping lady mountain. Kosha means to me my birthplace, my homeland, a very peaceful island. I did not even know what Koshrae stands for, what it is. Two o'clock in the morning, Germany time, I called here and somebody picked up the phone and they said, yeah, they have clams here. I mm -hmm. spend a visit, it's just you enter paradise. Then we met the national government and they asking me to run this facility. That shows you how much Koshrae is aware of the environment and not want to take the risk to lose some things. It was at the beginning so complicated to work here. I wanted to go back to Germany many, many times, but I fall in love with her and I had no more choice to go back because if I would go back, I would lose her. And it was then when our son uh, were um, cultured. <laughs> <laughs> so now we have a nice, beautiful family here. We live here in Koshrae, we are Koshraeans. For us, we are belong here. So this is Tridacna maxima. Tridactus so. Squamosa. This is a baby, this is a bigger one. Hippopus hippopus is the most hardiest animal. They like very high temperatures. Hippopus hippopus. Hippopus hippopus. This is our most favorite clam to do reseeding and community farming because they are less sensitive. The community needs to have success when you do work like this. 70 million eggs we can receive from one hippopus clam. Hippopus hippopus plays a very important role for food security. We had so many, why not we go into the food market and bottle those giant clams? There's in Asia a huge market and the local market is here. So there could be again a lot of involvement from the local community that can help us growing those products. What I like about this work is there's many new experience. I'm proud, I'm proud to be here. Producing the corals and plants is more important to us here in Koshraya. In the future, we're going to have live coral and plants in our island. This type of shipment here, we ship like twice a month and go up to the airport for delivery. This pickled giant clam meat and this is going to be our first try to put it into the international and local market. Koshain people, we are very proud of our nature and our resources here. Workers that we hire, they like their salary and the job is interesting for them. It's a benefit for them to provide to their families and also for Koshai. The most important species, that's the largest mollusk in the world, Tridacna chigas. It is extinct in Koshai from around the 80s.
My father, when he was young back then, there's landing Tridacna chigas in the reef ever since centuries ago. Nowadays, you only can see the dead shells. Back then, the water in the harbor was crystal clear with the runoff, the sediment. Environmental impact eventually has caused the extinction. We went and brought the same species from Palau and reproduced them. It was a long process. It took me many years to get the connection going. They are highly protected in Palau as well. The minister was then willing to give us a research permit. And I'm really thankful. And we got five of those animals shipped to Koshrae. This is one baby of Tridacna chigas, born here in Koshrae, February 2020. Okay, to all the clam lovers, we have here something very special. It's one of the biggest moments in my life. Millions of eggs coming out from the chigas and we're gonna have our second spawning. It's just unbelievable. So we're gonna use sperm from another Tridacna chigas to see the fertilization. I don't know how to express myself to this. It looks like a snowstorm for the future to have them back on the island. This is the start. I'm proud of it. I'm excited. So this is Tridacna chigas. This is chigas. Mm -hmm. Everybody talks about climate change and adaption and we're gonna lose this amount of coral. It's a big opportunity right now to do the coral restoration. So this is how reef restoration works. It starts with the small cookies. This is cement. We have a clue that helps us settling the coral on the small cookie. There's the coral grow. It spreads out over the cookie. You see here, this was the fragment first, and here now they overgrow in the cookie almost completely. Then these corals go back to the ocean for further grow out and form one big colony out of three like that. When new workers coming and we tell them, hey, you start making cookies. Well, no, you make cement cookies, not the uh, edible cookies. <laughs> they should get matured and start spawning by themselves naturally, reseed the ocean by itself. If we go to the coral farm, the whole place is full of fish because where there's corals, there's small fish, where there's small fish, there come big, bigger fish. We have cages of clams when we go there. Fish are not scared of us, fish are coming. Sea urchin, they're naturally settling in there. There is a lot of positive impacts for us doing just what we're doing. We invited students to come in. They started growing clams with us. So this was the first coral a kid here in Koshre saw, touched and learned that if we take care of them, we can even grow them. Getting a group, a community involved and placing with us clams into cages in the biosphere, in a protected area. We are really proud of this. We're seeing also how much giant clams adapt in this environment. Climate change, where temperatures are more hotter. Normally before we heat up the water to 34 degrees Celsius to stress them. The temperature is up now sometimes over 30 degrees here in our tanks. We believe that they're adapting. It would be interesting to have this documented. We need researchers or scientists to come and help us and also learn from what we're doing here. We can learn so much from scientists. We have no access to them. If any scientist, biologist wants to come and have the same love like we have, you are in the right place. We are ready for expansion. There is much more to do than just giant clams. This is the sea grape algae that we would like to grow here for food markets. Ideally, locals get some cages that they can grow the algae. And after time, we can harvest some and leave the rest for regrowing. This is what Koshain people need to know. It's important to protect these animals. Two other islands ordering from us to help them receive the clams. Bone Bay, we did already. We want to see all Koshrai full of giant clams everywhere not just in, in the protected area, but we need to start the project to provide the first seeds to bring them back to the reefs of Koshrai. Because I'm getting older, maybe my kids can take over and, and do the work what we started here. It's very exciting that we can bring back an endangered species. And I feel very proud to be able to give back to the community. I hope that it continues like this.